Coming up on Mountain News at 11, despite gas prices, high gas prices, drivers still hit the road this holiday weekend. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening to you. I'm Dakota Makris. Thank you for joining us tonight. It was a busy weekend for traveling. AAA officials say 500,000 Kentuckians were expected to travel this Memorial Day weekend. Grayson Passmore stopped at a gas station at the Athens Boonesboro exit off I-75 where travelers had mixed reviews about traveling with gas prices at record highs. So we stayed at a campground in Asheville, uh, just relaxing, hanging out with my kids and their uh, their babies. So it's been pretty fun. While we're not sure who's having oh, more fun this weekend, yeah. Mocha or Randy Sherling, Sherling says this is an annual trip with family that he wouldn't miss, no matter how high the gas prices get. The gas prices didn't fluctuate the entire time. They were still way too high, <laughs> but as it is, you know, we, we wanted to go. Mocha is blissfully unaware that Sherling's spending more than ever at the pumps. And Sherling's not alone. I think we saw like 480 in some places, and it's more than 100 bucks to fill up a half a tank in the truck, so sometimes it really sucks. Matt Schmidt also had his plans in place and is traveling back home from Florida to Wisconsin. While Sherling and Schmidt set ahead on their expensive journeys, it seemed clear to both travelers that many others ditched the drives. I think people maybe are finding stuff to do that's a little bit more closer to home, a little more local, um, even if that means just setting up a tent in your backyard. Normally when we've hit this area, traffic's backed up. Uh, Tennessee, normally it's backed up before you hit uh, Kentucky. We didn't have any of that. So, yeah, I was very surprised that the, the traffic was much lower. That was Grayson Passmore reporting. AAA reports the average price of gas nationwide is $4.62. Well, the average for gas in our state is $4.30 a gallon. Well, from wearing life jackets to staying hydrated, local officials are giving tips as to how you and your family can stay safe while boating this summer. Now, Officer Joseph Braden with the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife says when you are out on the water, it is important to be aware of the other boaters and follow all boating guidelines and rules, especially during warm summer days. Regional lakes become high traffic areas, and it is up to us to ensure we're all following safety protocols to leave the water accident free. Just pay attention, wear your life jacket, and the biggest thing is to leave the alcohol at home. It's just like driving a car. Everybody wants to either speed or, like in here, it's the no wakes or bring the alcohol or not wearing their life jackets. Well, Braden adds that staying hydrated throughout the day, especially when boating, is one of the best ways to stay safe while you're out on the water. Leslie County is honored and shared gratitude for the region's veterans this Memorial Day. A ceremony was held at Kentucky Veterans Cemetery Southeast near Hyden Monday. Kentucky Veterans Affairs Commissioner Whitney Allen joined Disabled American Veterans Chapter 133 members in recognizing the sacrifice. The Veterans Cemetery manager led the memorial for fallen U.S. soldiers. Without them, we're, we wouldn't be able to assemble here today. So hopefully we can just pay honor and tribute to them and give uh, honor to the family members that have lost loved ones before us. Well, Memorial Day, originally called Decoration Day, serves as a day of remembrance for those who died in service to the country since the first formal ceremony was held in May of 1868. Well, it was a big day for students in the North Laurel High School band, paying their respects to our fallen heroes in Washington, D.C. Well, we are told the band warmed up on the lawn of the National Mall in front of the Capitol building and the Smithsonian. The students marched down Constitution Avenue in their uniforms and past the Washington Monument and the White House. And we want to thank Danielle Smoot for this video. Well, dozens gathered this morning at the Memorial Arch in Huntington, West Virginia. Veterans presented wreaths and flowers were placed in honor of those missing in action. Emily Bennett talked to Medal of Honor recipient Woody Williams and other vet veterans about what this day means to them. Aim. A time to reflect under a flag symbolizing our freedom. We have never failed to answer our country's call. Veterans saluting their brothers and sisters who never made it back home. It's a debt that cannot be repaid. All we can do is just honor them. 
For Medal of Honor recipient Woody Williams, Memorial Day makes memories rush back. Feelings he usually tries to push down. On this day, it comes to the top. We can't help it. Making him think back to those he stood next to in combat. It's a proud feeling, and yet it is a remorse feeling. His thoughts turning to two Marines who sacrificed their lives protecting him. I think of them often, but on this day, it has a deeper, deeper meaning. Because when somebody gives their life to protect you, they can't give any more than that. Here under this arch, signifying victory in the memory of the fallen, veterans place reeds. Let this poppy be a symbol of reverence and remembrance of those who have died and paid the ultimate sacrifice for our state and nation. In these moments, veterans like Edward Diaz hope people turn their focus away from the hot dogs and the hamburgers back to the real purpose, honor. Remember that those that made those ultimate sacrifices aren't here to enjoy. And as Taps plays, it's a time to set aside differences. Somehow we must reestablish our patriotism of country. And unite. In honor of the United States Merchant Marines, we place this flower. That was Emily Bennett reporting. The keynote speaker at the event was Edward Diaz, the Secretary of the State Department of Veterans Assistance. Well, another quiet night is in store across the mountains. Let's start over at the London Corbin Airport. All is quiet, but it is still warm. Current temperature sitting at 73 degrees, 77 still in Jackson and Somerset, 73 in London, 69 in Manchester, and 75 over in Pikeville. Dew points also very sticky at this hour in the middle and upper 60s, so a warm and muggy evening and overnight is expected. All is quiet up on pinpoint Doppler and this quiet weather continues into tonight. We are watching out for a few areas of patchy fog, so keep that in mind, especially if you have any travel plans tonight or early on Tuesday. I have your complete forecast coming up in just a little bit. Dakota. All right, Cameron, thank you so much. Well, a man charged with stabbing a woman in Southern Kentucky will be in court tomorrow. Whitley County deputies say Daryl Errols attacked his girlfriend last week. At last check, well, she is in a medically induced coma after eight hours of surgery. Earls is charged with attempted murder and assault. He is set to have a preliminary hearing tomorrow morning. Well, we now know the name of a woman who was killed in a four-wheeler accident Sunday. Martin County Coroner Chris Todd said the sheriff's office was called to a house on Rock House Road in the Tomahawk community. Sheriff's deputies tell a 61-year-old Muriel Penix was killed. The coroner says she was pronounced dead at Highlands ARH. Well, it is nearly one week after the tragic mass shooting that left 19 school children and two of their teachers dead in Uvalde. People are coming in from all around to pay their respects as the small Texas city prepares for funerals and a long and difficult road to recovery. CBS News correspondent Lilia Luciano has more. Mourners came to this Uvalde funeral home for a visitation Monday as the grieving community prepares to bury the 21 mass shooting victims. The funeral home is the same building where the gunman initially began firing before his attack on Rob Elementary School just steps away. The visitation for 10-year-old Amory Joe Garza and Maite Rodriguez is the first for the 19 children and two teachers killed last Tuesday. Like so many people here in Texas, Nancy Vera is calling for change. I think that we need to ensure that our schools are better funded so that we can have keep our children safe. President Biden and the First Lady traveled to Uvalde Sunday to meet with the distraught families of the victims. State Senator Roland Gutierrez says the president expressed support for the demolishing of the school building in the aftermath. The president assured me that he's not leaving, that he's going to make sure that the government's resources are here talked about a federal grant to raise a school. Gutierrez also says the mother of a victim told him she believes her daughter bled to death after being shot in the back. 
and could have survived had police rushed in right away. Jesse Rodriguez lost his 10-year-old daughter, Annabelle. I would have entered to try to do something, not stand behind a wall. As angry parents begged for help, the on-scene police commander gave instructions to wait, even as children trapped inside called 911 multiple times. More than an hour later, a federal tactical team stormed the room and killed the 18-year-old gunman. Lilia Luciano, CBS News, Uvalde, Texas. Well, at the White House Monday, President Joe Biden said there may be some bipartisan support to tighten restrictions on the kind of high-powered high weapons used by the gunman. Well, coming up here at 11, a group of people in one Kentucky city walked 22 miles to raise awareness for veterans' mental health. And we are dry tonight, but showers and storms return by the end of the work week. I have those details coming up.